Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another IBM ThinkPad. I love taking a look at these uh, older machines. Any ThinkPad I really like going over, but um, the older IBM branded ones are, are great. Now, this would be a ThinkPad from the period of time after Lenovo bought the PC brand from IBM, but they were still using the IBM logo on the products that they were selling. So the ThinkPad was not the Lenovo ThinkPad yet, it was still being called the IBM ThinkPad. Um, so you still have the old view here, and when we flip over, you can clearly see the Lenovo uh, on, the, uh, on the manufacturing for this machine, which was uh, 2007 here, February of 2007. So that was you know two years after Lenovo bought the PC company from IBM. Um, so probably right on the very tail end, uh, of the series of machines when they were still using the IBM logo. And I can tell you, how do you know which one it is? You take a look here and it is a T60P that we're looking at. So this would be from the second last generation, I think, of, of machines that would have come out uh, before the switchover. There would have been a T61, I think. And then the next models after this would be the T500. And that's when you switched over to the full Lenovo um, branding and, and a new, slightly new design architecture as well. So this is a T60P. This would have been uh, what you would be considering the, I guess, professional workstation replacement uh, in the in the product lines for ThinkPads. So where previous to this, you would have had something like the A30, A31, uh, and then you had these models here where you had a P at the end, which meant it was professional, usually had discrete graphics standard on these machines. And, uh, but other than that, they would have been the same. And then you would have had the after when they switched over to the Lenovo fully branded, um, you had the W series and now they have the P series. So uh, this is a 15 inch model uh, laptop. Uh, you would have had actually three different screen sizes on this one, a 14.1, a 15 and a 15.4 uh, options that would have been available. Um, I think this is a 15. This is a 15 inch screen here. Uh, at uh, I believe 1400 by 1050 resolution. So it's the second lowest of the screens that they had available. Um, pretty good condition though. Take a look at our port selection here. Just on the front of the machine here, we've got our release clip. Then we've got a manual on off switch for our Wi-Fi. Still had infrared at this time available on the systems. Switching over to the side here, we've got our ultra base slot, which would have worked for uh, your multi burners, uh, then there would have been like a hard drive caddy in here. And I think this series of machines also supported the battery packs that you could buy to have like a replaceable battery in this to give even longer battery life than you would get off the, the standard batteries installed in the system. We've got two USB ports in our Kensington lock. At the rear, we have our battery, some exhaust and our large barrel plug for power. And then on the left side here, we've got more ventilation. We've got a VGA port, modem and ethernet, audio ports, another USB port, and then we've got a combo uh, PCMCIA and express card. So it's got kind of one of each available. Flipping over to the bottom, you've got your battery pack here and that's it. Uh, all of the upgradability on the system is underneath the keyboard and wrist rest. So you would release one, two, three, four, five screws. Those five screws combined will not form Captain Planet. They will remove the wrist rest, which will allow you to have access to the memory dims. And then the keyboard comes off and that pretty much gives you access to everything else that you wanna be upgrading. Uh, except for hard drive, of course, which is on this little panel here. One screw flips away, you can pull out your hard drive and replace that quite quickly. When we flip open the lid again, we'll take a look at our classic seven row ThinkPad keyboard. Gorgeous, wonderful to type on. We have the UltraNav, uh, which was a combination of a TrackPoint, classic on all ThinkPads, and then a small touchpad. Uh, obviously with a more modern laptops, the touchpads are much larger now. Um, but at the time this was you know, pretty much all that uh, was going on. We also have a fingerprint reader on here for some security, and then that screen that I mentioned. So let's get this guy uh, booted up, I guess, and we'll take a look at what we've got running on the system. We're all up and running in Windows 10 now here. Let's take a look at the specs. As I mentioned, the screen here is nice, 1400 
by 1050 resolution on this 15 inch screen, which is really nice. Uh, the largest size screen that you could get in this uh, T60P series was a 15.4 inch display at 1680 by 1050, so a little bit larger. Actually, in the 15 inch screen, there was a 16 by 1200 resolution, which was, you know, pretty similar to the 15.4 which you could upgrade the one that's on here but I, I think the resolution is great at this size um uh, in terms of in terms of enjoyability uh, as far as processor goes we have an intel core 2 duo t 7600g processor that's a dual core non-hyper threaded and that goes up to 2.3 2.4 gigahertz in terms of processing speed memory wise i have four gig of ram installed uh in this system and then uh for storage we have a 500 gig SATA hard drive and then a, that DVD burner drive. Graphics wise, we have this ATI Mobility Fire GL V5250 GPU, which is great, right? 256 megabyte GPU. I mean, for Windows 10, it's not great, but if you think Windows XP uh, era, Windows 7, Windows Vista, that's a pretty good mobile graphics adapter for, for the time. Uh, and this was, uh, I believe, of the two GPUs you could get, there was a 5200 and 5250. I'm not sure what the difference between the two of them was. I think the 5250 was, I'm not sure, maybe it was like a downgrade uh, from the from the 5200 or an upgrade. Uh, but it may have just had something to do with the type of screen that came with. Maybe there was a better optimization between those um, those two cards. Anyways, that's the hardware that we've got working on the system. A pretty decent machine. Again, this keyboard is great to type on. Uh, let's take a look at Chrome and see how Crabrave handles itself. Now, I suspect at 1080p, we're going to run into some stuttering issues. Uh, you know, pretty standard in the Core 2 Duo range that 1080p is is you know pushing the envelope in terms of performance uh whereas 720p is going to be a little bit better but we've got it buffered up here and we're going to see how it goes yeah so i can see right away we're already stuttering and skipping uh dropping most of our frames so i'm going to pause and i'm going to move our selection down to 720p this should give us a marked improvement and is actually better for the viewport anyways. Um, this screen is running at, you know, just over 720p in terms of resolution here for a widescreen video like this. It looks like we're still getting a little bit of stuttering. Uh, the birds are kind of chirping a bit. Yeah, so actually we're still getting pretty bad frame rate on this at 720. Let's drop down to 480p and see if that resolves our issue. Oh, definitely. Yeah, so we can see here at 480p, there's still a couple frame drops coming down here and that may just be rebuffering but it's running a lot smoother now. So I, it's a reasonable experience, I don't think. Um, too unexpected from an older machine like this. Uh, definitely has the minimum performance requirements that I would say to go out for uh, one of my donation laptops. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll do well. So once again, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy this video as well as any of the other ones that I have on the channel here on Retro PC Durham. I hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.